Hi everyone, in this episode of How Do You Do That, we're going to look at the image restoration tools that are in Resolve 17. A lot of the Resolve 17 restoration tools have been originated from what used to be the DaVinci Revival application. So let's have a look at some of them. Okay, so what we're going to do here now is open the OpenFX library, and these are the Resolve FX revival tools that are available when you have Resolve Studio. And so for example, you'll see here you've got an automatic dirt removal, chromatic aberration removal, dead pixel fixer, debanding, deflicker. So in this shot, for example, I want to apply a little bit of deflicker to it. So what I'm going to do here, add a node, drag deflicker to it. And then we have our options here. And then all we have to do here now is now play it. So as you can see it looks uh, very, does a pretty effective job on it. If I want to see what it was like before, I can just bypass that node. That's what it's like without the correction. And then with the correction, it does a very good job like so. Now, for example, if we come over to something like, as you can see here, we've got in this part of the picture, we've got a piece of dirt here, right in this area. Now I want to remove that. So what I can do here, add another node, put in the dust buster. And then we have all of our dust busting tools that are available here. But if I want to, I can just draw a point over it. Boom, it's done. And then I can do another one here, take that one out, go to the next shot, frames forward. And then we say, okay, I want to take maybe this out, like so. And then you can say, I want to take maybe this out, like so. So you can do this on a frame by frame basis. It's a very interactive uh, method for doing this. And then you can do it with either a blend clone or spatial or uh, clone mode only. And then you can also see whether it's going to be a direct draw or you draw an ellipse. So that's actually using the, um, if we come back here to the library, you can see we use the deflicker and the dust buster. We also have a frame replace mode here and we also have noise reduction as well. I'm not a big fan of using noise reduction when I'm doing restoration work uh, because I want to keep the material as pristine as possible when I'm doing restoration. And then we also have a function such as object removal which is very useful and patch replace. Now patch replace is something that I use very often when you have changeover marks at the end of a reel. At the end of a reel of film, generally you'll see a little circular mark on the upper right hand corner of the picture. First one indicating to the projectionist that you start the motor of the other projector. The second mark will show up and it will indicate to, turn, to push the changeover button to change over from projector A to projector B. So if we want to remove those, we can use the patch replace tool. So just give you an idea how the patch replace tool works. Okay, for example, let's say we've got this rock here and we don't have any changeover cues on this material. So what we're going to do is we want to remove this stone from the picture. So what we do here is we create a node. And then what we do here is we just put patch replace. And now, as you can see here, move it like so and now if you come to here you can see here now when you play this you can see here that it has replaced the area with the stone with what I have put there so this way and as you can see here the area that's replacing also has movement inside so that makes it very useful so as you can see, if I turn this off, you can see there's my stone. If I turn it on, the stone goes away. 
So it's very useful for this. Now, the f other function that you will see here is that if I go back to the library mode, we have another one which is called object removal. Object removal, you can remove a unwanted object in the picture. The only thing is I usually prefer patch replace over object removal as object removal will do this, but the area that is being removed will not be animated inside that area. So this is something to look out for. The noise reduction uh, tool will give you all the noise reductions for temporal and spatial noise reduction, which are similar to the functions that you see here under the motion effects area here too. But as I mentioned earlier, I tend not to use noise reduction when I am doing a image restoration of a movie. We have another one which is called frame replacement. When we put frame replacement in, you can also make a new frame and have it the information based upon the frame before or the frame after. And so it's, um, these tools are, uh, so as you can see now, we've looked at Dustbuster. D-banding is, uh, and dead pixel fixer and things like this are mainly more for video generated material. Same with chromatic aberrations and things like that. Now, if we have the automatic dirt removal, this is a very useful tool. So for example, if I come up to uh, this shot here, and I want to do a automatic dirt removal. I just add a node, come to automatic dirt removal, drag it in, and then you'll see. Now you see if it's up too high, then you can come over here and turn the repair strength down a bit, and you can also see the mask that is being used. So this shows you exactly what is being used for that function for it. And very often what I will do is maybe come do a, um, a deflicker first and then after do the automatic dust busting after that. So what you have to do here is if you change this, There, okay, so as you can see now, the artifacts have been diminished, but you still have the deflicker on here. So what I would do here then is then come over here and say, I wanna get rid of this piece here. So what I do is come up to this side here and then do the dust buster here. And now that piece of dirt is gone. Now, as you can see, that was over a series of frames, so it must have been a strange issue there on the film. Take it out like that. And we take that out like so. And then now what we can do is we can now do a deflicker on this shot. And put that in on this too. Now, if I look at this without any correction here, just remove this one, remove this, remove all of my corrections, and now we can see that's what it was like before. Okay, and now, much better. There's still a little bit of flicker there. We could do some more work on it, but it's infinitely better than what we had before. Okay, now there is another dust buster in this area of the viewer. Now, if we click on this and we right mouse click on dust removal, And in the dirt removal settings, once we right mouse click on the little uh, brush there, then these have our dirt removal 
and region of interest either draw and clean or click and clean and then we select the pixel size and then we can find the aggression in the blend and all that. Now this is actually um, something that is running off of the CPU in the computer and this is a direct migration from the DaVinci Revival application. Now this only works with DPX or Cineon files. So what you would have to do in the media management area, you can then come over here and do a transcode from one format into the other using the media management tools. Thereby, what you could do is if you were starting with a QuickTime file, you could change it into a DPX, for example. Okay, another thing to consider is color correction. So as you can see here is a scan that we did and the film was extremely faded. So the first thing we want to do with our scan is we need to resize it. Because as you can see, I'm looking at the soundtrack and the perfor and the sprocket holes here too. So what I'm going to do here first is pan it over like so. Okay, so now we have the whole image resized. And now if I look at my scopes, I can pretty much see where the, issue, the problem is. As you can see, there is a lot of red information in the uh, low lights or the black areas of the picture. So as you can see, if I come over here to my lift areas, and then if I balance that, and bring it down like so, starts to look a little bit better. Now as you can see it was scanned the gamma was wide open so as you if you look on the scopes you can see there's a definite tilt on the left and right sides. So what we want to do is take the gamma control and turn that down to minimize that and then we can bring our lift area back down and then bring, then balance my gain, like so. And now we just want to bring it up a little bit. Take a little bit of red out of the gain areas. So as you can see, this is what it was like before the restoration and that's afterwards. So as you can see, the color rendition is far better than what we had before. So what we've been looking at here is using the primaries for color restoration using the Revival FX uh, tools inside Resolve, and then also showing us the uh, dust removal tool that is also hidden in here as well. So there we have it. For more information about training services, have a look in the comments below. And don't forget to have a look at our other tips and tricks videos. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe so you can find out when all the new videos are coming around. And also think about subscribing to our Patreon channel. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks a lot.